Hey folks, Sam here with Sam Wood Outdoors. Time for another fast track trapping video. Today, we're doing the fast track to beaver trapping. Meet my buddy Bucky. Bucky stumbled into one of my sets a few years ago and he's kind of been around ever since. Not my biggest beaver, wasn't my first beaver, damn sure won't be my last. But anyways, on with the video. This video, uh, we're gonna give you kind of the basics, get you going. You'll be able to trap beaver after this and you'll have no problem. And then from then on, you'll just develop your own ways for your areas. Um, I used to have a lot more beaver here where I'm at. And uh, the last few years, the beaver population's definitely crashed down. I, do, I blame a lot of that on the DNR. They're doing a lot of uh, trout stream habitat restoration type stuff. They're cutting the trees back away from the, from the rivers. Um, and one of the big things is if a beaver is caught in a trout stream uh, building a dam or whatever here in central Wisconsin, he's immediately trapped or they are immediately trapped out and removed. Um, it's kind of a deal I think the DNR made with the, uh, the uh, Trout Unlimited and stuff like that. Really poor decision for one of our natural resources, which is the beaver, because um, the beaver and the trout have been kind of coexisting for years. But it is what it is. got to deal with it. So when I go beaver trapping, i got to drive about two and a half, three hours to get into good beaver country. Not great beaver country, but good beaver country. And you can typically put up some pretty good numbers. Um, but I don't do it every year. And, uh, you know, I go down there for a year, skip two, three years, go down there, just get enough for eating, get enough for coyote bait, stuff like that. Um, and the prices haven't been extremely high, so it's hard to justify going down there. But I do do it. And uh, that's what we did for this video. We traveled down there. We did a little bit in the fall. We did a little bit in the spring. And uh, just kind of wanted to give you the gist of how we do things. Uh, basically, the basic sets that I use... Um, I trap the lodges. Here in Wisconsin, we can't trap the dams. Um, you have to be, I don't know, 10 or I don't remember what it is, but I have a uh, string that I carry with me, a piece of rope that keeps me far enough away from the dam. But you can't trap the dams. Uh, I trap the, the, the choke points of small streams coming off of big lakes and stuff like that where beavers are. Um, I do trap... Uh, the crawl outs where they're crawling out um, and in the spring I do a lot of caster mounds and that's basically find a spot where the beavers are where they put a caster mound you can freshen it up otherwise you just take a big glob of mud set it on the bank put some caster scent on top all I ever use again Lennon's alcohol beaver um, put a little bit of that on there set my trap down there and that is basically it um, and they're like a big muskrat you know they have a little bitty brain Beavers do tend to get trap shy if you keep screwing up on them, but otherwise they're fairly easy to catch. Uh, you can find their runs and stuff just like muskrats. They have bank dens just like muskrats, and you can take muskrat trapping and apply a lot of that to beaver trapping. You just need bigger traps. Uh, traps. Let's talk about traps. Probably the bread and butter of anybody's beaver line or the trap. If you're going to trap beaver, probably the first trap you should get is the 330 conibear. This right here will uh, allow you to trap pretty much everything uh, and every set that you have to. You can use it on caster mounts, you can use it on crawlovers, you can trap the trails, uh, you can trap the lodges, uh, anything like that you can do with a 330. Um, now, when you get a 330s, uh, first thing you should probably do is order a big set of setters. This is a smaller set, that I've welded two pipes on. Um, and it just gives me a better grip for my handles and everything else. And then the next thing you need to get, and this is a, this is not a, this is not a uh, option. This is a definite, you need to get it. And that is a safety setter. Basically what this does, it goes on top of the jaws. Here's the set trap. Goes on top of the jaws and sits just like that. And what that does is even though it has the Safeties on the springs, it allows you when you got the safeties off the springs, when you finally get the trap set, you move the safeties off, maybe you're going to adjust something. You never have to worry about getting your hand caught in there. And let me tell you, if you get your hand caught in this, it's a bitch. You're going to be lucky if you don't break something. These are designed to basically kill and break an animal's neck that's, you know, 40, 50 pounds. 
So you definitely want that. Now to make things easier, you know, you can set the trap like this, just set it down in a run, and then you can put some sticks in the springs and stuff like that, pull your safety off and you're good to go. To make things easier, uh, I get um, H stands. Here's a small H stand, short H stand, and that works just like we did in the fast track the coon trapping. Put your trap in there and then you can set that down in the run uh, or in front of a bank den or in front of a lodge. Um, you can even put a caster mount on the bank here and, and have the beaver swim into it. And uh, in order for you to set these in the state of Wisconsin, they have to be at least halfway submerged to use 330s. Um, you can't use them on dry ground. Um, but that also allows you to get a 96 hour check which is another good thing. I go down, I set my beaver traps for two, three days, check them all, and then I come back like three days later and I can check them again. Um, as long as they are submerged conibears or drowning sets. Um, and, and we're gonna show you a lot of that. So this is uh, the basic setup. Like I said, you can start with a dozen 330s, half dozen, one, get your H stand. Um, another H stand, which people find pretty convenient is the tall H stands, just like this. And you slide the trap down inside here, it sits in here, you close the top up, just wrap some wire around it. And then what that allows you to do is drop your trap down into deeper water, like on the, a deeper run or a deeper bank then and something like that and you don't have to worry about trying to reach down in there up over your uh, gloves or anything like that. So that allows you to drop that right down in there. In the video, you'll see we got one borrowed from my buddy. It's like six, seven feet tall. So this is a really, really good tool. Um, if you know you're gonna be a beaver trapper and you don't have a lot of competition, these are great. If you have competition, Johnny Sneakum, you know, the unethical trapper can steal your stuff because every trapper that's out there is gonna know what this stand is. With the short stands, you can kind of drop it down, hide your whole set, and, uh, and not have to worry too much about that. Um, another kind of bear that I use is a big 660. And this is basically, basically a kind of bear that we've cut and welded a bar in and made it just bigger, covers a bigger area. And you can turn it sideways in them tall H stands to cover a whole bigger area in deeper water. This is a great, great trap to have, but I don't have a lot of them. I have, I believe, four of them. Used to have six, but somewhere along the line, you know, some get taken. Um, so I've had, I got four of them. And really, if you got one or two, you'll probably be fine. They're just nice to have when you have them. When you have, when you need them, they're nice to have. The only thing is. Um, stands for them are almost impossible to find. So what I've done, like I said, you can slide it down in the long ways in your tall H stand. But what I did is I cut a regular short H stand just like this and welded a bigger bar in it and now I can set my 660 down there. So that's what I've done. So that's pretty much it for the, the counter bear setup. Um, the next thing I use is the, is the foothold traps. And my go-to, without a doubt, foothold trap is a number five Duke. It's just a huge trap. Um, and they're all, I got all mine with the pit pans on them. They're in a, they look big and they're kind of intimidating. But guys, it's not that bad. Just break them over your knee and you're good to go. So I got the pit pans on mine. So when you pull them down, it's basically night latched. You'll hear a click and it's ready to go. And then all you do is you push your springs towards the dog side. And there it is, nice and flat, easy peasy, Japanesey. And look at how big that area is on them traps. That is huge when you have like the back foot of a beaver. Now, some people target the back foot, some people target the front foot. Um, for me, 
I'm more of a front foot guy, but I still like to have the big trap in case we get the back foot. A lot of guys say you want to trap the back foot because that's where all the power is when they swim. I like targeting the front foot because I'm a drowner guy. And once that front foot slides down, they can't get their head up. It takes a lot shallower water to drown them, but that's just me. Um, another trap that I use is the number four long spring. It's just basically the same thing as the number five, just a little bit smaller. And the reason I use them, this is my go-to otter trap also. So I have a few more of these. Uh, and you can find these at rendezvous and stuff like that. Fairly cheap. Um, Another trap I use is the number four jump trap. And these are great traps. They'll hold a lot. The only problem is as I get older, you either got to have a setter for them or they just get harder on your hands to set. So I am getting away from these. Probably make some fur hangers with some of the ones I have and stuff like that. But I'm getting away from them. But if you can set them and you enjoy them, they're a great trap. They don't take up as much room as the long springs and they hold just as good. Um, this year, I bought some of the four coiled, uh, number four coil, four coiled Dukes. Um, and the reason I got these, uh, one, they're cheap. You can get a lot of them. And they have a big catch area. And the other thing was, is hopefully we're going to get some wolf trapping back in here in Wisconsin. Obviously, we don't get a tag every year. It's hard to, to justify owning a bunch of wolf traps. But I can get a bunch of these, uh, tune them up. Put a little work into them, and I think they'll do great for, for uh, holding a wolf. Uh, you know, I'll have to base plate them and beef them up a little bit. But I'm pretty happy with them. And then the other thing was, I can use them on the beaver line. And they worked really well for us this year. We caught a few beavers with them. I, I was pretty happy and pretty impressed. So that's just another option on the, uh, the traps that I use. Um, the other thing, you're going to need some stakes and some weights. Now, I've done sandbags. I've done, and now I just go to like three or four railroad ties, but you can use sandbags, buckets filled with concrete, um, guys, uh, and, and this is all for the drowners. Guys use uh, pipe, they use rebar for drowners, they use fiberglass for drowners, they use wire. Um, I'm a big chain guy. I like to use chain because it's durable, reusable, and doesn't take up a lot of room. And let me show you how the drowners work. Let me come around the camera here. This is probably, uh, the, 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 you'll have to learn, when I do, when I do my uh, spring trapping, some of my fall trapping, like on the crawl outs, I use the, 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 the coil spring traps or the long spring traps. But I don't like to use them so much in the fall because the water temperature is cold and it's getting colder. So the ice freezes up quicker in the evening and it just tends to plug up your sets. In the spring, I use a lot of them on the crawlouts and the caster mounds, but in the spring, the water temperature is getting warmer every day. So you're getting to use them a little bit longer and a little bit longer. So even though I'll go in the morning and there will be ice on the water, uh, a lot of times that ice has only started at three, four, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, so it hasn't been iced over very long. In the fall, it's kind of just the opposite, you know, 10 o'clock and it's froze over, so your sets are useless basically all night. So I tend to steer away from my coil springs and long spring traps in the fall and I just stick to basically conibers. Um And in the spring, it's kind of the other way around. So uh, when I do use them, I use a grounder. And that's a uh, minor chain. And basically you take and you stake, or put your weight or whatever on this end and you send it down out into the deep water. And then up here, I stake this end down on the ground. So you have it like this. And then this is where I attach my trap to. I got a little hole there, I just wire my trap to it. And what happens is, is when the animal, he goes down the chain and then he can't come back up. So the deeper he goes and the farther out he goes into the water, he can't make it back. Oops, sorry about that. He can't make it back. So it's just, the chain is reusable. It only takes up this much room and you're ready to go. Another option and a lot of people use are the drowning brackets. It's just an L and it's got a hole in each end. And what you do is basically the same concept. You can use wire, cable, anything like that. Um, I got some wire here. 
So what you'll do is you'll anchor one end out to the deep. Um, cable, same way. And then you take the long end, or the short end is what your wire goes through, the little hole in the short end. But the long end faces the deeper water, and that's where you hook your trap. So as the animal goes down, it goes down, and then he can't come back up. He tries to come back up. But what happens with wire is it kinks, and, and a lot of times it'll get really kinked up, twisted up, and you can't reuse it. Um, cable kinks, a little more durable than wire. Um, they have the same concept with a bigger hole in it, and you can use it on rebar, you know, a 10-foot piece of rebar. Um, or you can use it on fiberglass. It's just that stuff gets kind of heavy to carry. So it's all pretty much just a personal preference on what you use for your drowners. Um, another thing is if you buy most of your traps, I know Duke traps all come with that swivel on there now. Just like that. That is also a drowner. And what you do is you come from the inside of that and you go through that little hole. Now the same concept, this is anchored up top, the beaver or whatever swims out, and then when he tries to come back up, that kinks and he, and he can't, so he stays out there and drowns. So that's just another option. You could go and take your traps and put that swivel on there, and you'd be good to go. Um, now the last thing uh, is dispatching the animal. Um, we dispatched a few, because we caught them and they, if the water is shallow, I never used to trap it unless I'm close to home. And you got to check your traps every day. Remember, you have to have water deep enough to drown the animal in order to get a 96-hour check. Or you have to go and check your traps every day. And if the water is shallow and you don't have a drowner or he's not in a conibear, you're going to come across a live beaver. And a live beaver is a pretty intimidating thing. So in Wisconsin, we can't shoot them. So you got to carry a bat or you can take a 330 conibear bear on a stick and put it over the top of his head and kill him that way. But I use a bat. I got this wood one's been with me for a lot of years outside of the aluminum one. Um, but a lot of guys find this intimidating or it, it's a just a crappy deal because what they do is they come in, they smack the beaver on top of the head. And it doesn't kill him, he, you know, he kind of quivers or it's just, it's just a bad deal. And then they smack him again and now he's bleeding out the nose, you know, and he got a crushed skull and it's just a pain to his skin. The proper way to discharge any animal with a bat, blunt force trauma to the head, is you come in from behind the head and just below the ears you hit him with a motion going this way. You hit him right there and what happens is that severs their spinal cord, it pulls it apart and uh, basically kills them instantly and that's what you want to do. I do know we dispatched a few of them. I don't know if they'll make it in the video. Um, Corey decides all that. He does all the editing. I don't even interfere. Um, sometimes, you know, the camera lighting sucks or whatever and it doesn't make it in the video. But just to tell you right here, you come from the back of the head, hit them below the ears and everything's fine. So now folks, now comes the fun part. We need to get out there and we need to get on the line and we need to catch some critters. Um, so let's go. Got it. Welcome to the fast track to beaver trapping. All right, we talked about the traps and everything while we were inside. Let's talk a little bit about my boat and what I do. Some of my spots you can walk through. Don't get discouraged if you don't have a boat. You're just gonna have to work to find them spots that you can walk down to. Uh, the boat here, this is not our ordinary trapping boat. Um, if I'm by myself or whatever, I have another one that's a lot narrower than this. It's just easier to get around places. Um, I do use this one when I first go out and set the first couple of days because it carries a lot of gear. Of course, we had Corey with the camera gear and everything else. Um, basically, it's a 16-foot boat. 
I got high sides on it, something you want to look into. Um, the low sided boat's not very stable. Um, and then the wider the boat, the more stable it is. We have, uh, this is probably the most important thing. You're not going to do a whole lot of beaver trapping unless you got yourself a mud runner, surface drive, uh, go devil. This is, this is a beaver dam uh, kit motor. Um, you buy the motor from Harbor Freight. This is a 13 horse, uh, what's the name brand on this one? Predator engine, you get them at Harbor Freight. Um, and then you buy the kit from uh, Beaver Dam. It's a little cheaper way of doing it. Uh, for my other boat, we got a little smaller one. Does a lot better. Um, that's basically it. You know, a good stable John boat. And then uh, be able to haul all your gear and, and uh, be safe. Hey folks, welcome to the fast track of beaver trapping. Uh, we went out here yesterday, did some scouting, put some traps out. It was really, really windy, not too great for video. Today we got a little bit of wind, but we're going we're gonna to get this thing started. We're going to get rolling. A lot of you guys trap beaver in the fall. I do have some beaver in the fall. We got some older footage we'll probably throw in this video. But most of the stuff you're going to see now is spring beaver trapping. A couple of reasons why I trap beaver in the spring. Um, one, I don't have a whole lot going on. It's that time of the year where things are transitioning. In the fall, I got coon trapping, coyote trapping, deer hunting, uh, it just everything is, the fall is really, really busy. And I don't have a lot of beavers where I'm at. Um, so I have to travel and that takes up some time out of my day. So we come down here, we do this in the spring um, and it's just better for me. Another thing is the caster glands are usually worth more money lately than the hides. Casters are bigger this time of the year. Um, but there's some things that are just tougher in the spring. One is, if the weather is still chilly and not warm, the beavers haven't gone into full-blown, get out, spread out, go check things out mode. Um, and you also have to deal with frozen in traps. Um, and, and we have that here starting out. So it's a good thing we're gonna get to explain it. We're here, we got a beaver lodge. So. We came here yesterday, no ice. We set our traps. We really didn't know what was all going on. We got ice this morning, froze pretty good. Um, you can see, not too cool. But in a couple hours, this will all be gone. This is one of the problems with the spring if you're gonna use footholds. And I use a lot of footholds for beaver. I use a lot of 330s, but I do like to use footholds. Especially in the spring, when the beaver are out moving around and you can get some caster mounds out and uh, run some drowners. All my sets for beaver trapping are drowners, especially in the spring, submersible. I get them out, they drown, and uh, I don't have to worry about it. Reason being, like I said, I travel two and a half hours to go beaver trapping. And in Wisconsin, I only have to check my submersible drowning sets every four days. So like I'll set Saturday, Sunday, um, check my sets on Sunday, I'll leave, I'll come back Wednesday, check all my sets, then we'll come back down, we'll be down here on Friday to wrap this whole thing up. So it's good. But we had traps froze in. So we're gonna talk about what's going on here. You see we got big feed beds, got a big lodge, we got some muddy water, we had that yesterday, I know the beavers were here. Today the bubbles just confirmed that. Um, but let's explain what goes on at a lodge and how you can set it. You can see right here we got a lot of bubbles. There's an entrance to this lodge right here. I found that yesterday, it's pretty deep. But it's not their main entrance. They're only coming out of here and they're going into this feed bed and they're eating. In the winter, they don't travel very far. They come out of their lodge, they eat on the feed bed, they pull some sticks back in, they do whatever they gotta do, they come out and, and that's it. Right now, with the ice still coming in at night, that's the mode they're in. They're not really traveling. Some of you guys that are further south, you'll probably have, you'll be able to trap more of this river and catch more beaver moving in and out. But right now we're gonna focus on mostly the lodges and getting them beaver because they're not venturing out very far. So I wouldn't, I don't trap in the spring. I do not trap the entrances to these lodges. I think that you'll end up with some trap shy beavers uh, trying to go in and out around the dead ones. I don't know if that's true. That's just me and half the stuff. I tell you guys about trapping is you have to be comfortable in what you do. So I don't trap the entrances uh, to these things. But what I do do is you can see they come out here. They are going to go because here's another entrance. 
that they're just kind of, the bubbles are coming out from in the house, they ain't doing much. But they will eventually come out and run around this lodge. And when they do, I got a 660 right there blocking that spot. Uh, it's froze in right now. It would have went off probably till two, two in the morning. I think we watched the temperature two in the morning is probably when we really started to get some hard ice. But in the next couple of days, this is gonna thaw out. That trap's gonna work and it's gonna work fine. Um, if I have a beaver go through there where it's froze in, it might go off after the ice thaw or whatever. But that's just something you have to deal with and, and this is how I deal with it. Over there I have another channel. When they're swimming out around here, they're going to start using that little channel over there. I got a 330 in there. Um, if you have an otter tag, I would go up that river, this little creek entrance here, and as soon as it necks down, I would throw a 330 in there for otter. Be a great spot. Might get a beaver up there too, but more of an otter. But anyways, let's go around this lodge here. Like I said, there's that opening. We have a spot where they're crawling out here. You can see they got kind of a ramp built to the upper part of their lodge. If you were checking your traps every day, you could definitely put a, a set in here with a foothold, um, but it's not deep enough to drown them, so he would be here and be alive. And in Wisconsin, that's not legal. You have to be able to submerge the animal to have the four day check. So I didn't set that and that's the reason why if you're gonna check every day, that'd be a great spot. One of these spots where they're crawling up right here, be a perfect spot. Right here, we have another entrance to the lodge. Um, yesterday, it didn't look like there was a, a lot of activity here. Kind of looked like they were going out. It's kind of what they're doing. Um, but like I said, I don't trap the entrances. But they do come out and they will swim around. Last night, you can see there's a lot of bubbles right here. This is where that, we have the boat kind of covering the main entrance to the lodge. That's the way we came in. And the main entrance is right under here. So you can see they came here and they dove and they go right in. You can see the little bubble trail here where they're coming in. But as soon as this gets all thawed out all night long, they'll start venturing out and around and they'll come through right there and you can see we have another 330 in that trail out there. Here's another crawl up to the lodge right here. There's their main entrance. They will crawl up here. We put a little caster right there. We got a, a number four long spring setting right there. It's froze in right now. The beavers aren't coming up here because of the ice. But in the next couple of nights when this warm weather hits, that trap will be functional and he'll go out there and we can drown. So I'm not worried about that right there. We're gonna have a drowned beaver there. Same thing here on this crawl up. Here's a real good example of them crawling up and taking sticks and stuff and building their lodge bigger and bigger. Right here. I have a jump trap, number four jump right in there on a drowner and that's plenty deep enough out there to drown that beaver. So that's a spot we're gonna use. Like I said, I would have put it on in that uh, crawl out over there, but I'm not gonna be here to check my traps every day. So I'm just not gonna do it. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's how we trap a beaver lodge. We're gonna go over across the river here. We got a bank den we found yesterday. We'll show you how to find them. And then we got some other spots we're gonna go check and uh, we're definitely gonna set more traps today. So we'll get on with that footage, but uh, let's get out of here and get the checking, Corey. All right, we got this other spot here. If you see out there, we got a big old beaver lodge. There is really nowhere to trap around that lodge. It's pretty shallow. Um, I just chose not to trap around it, but I did check the feeder creeks that were going up and I found this one yesterday. It was not iced over, but I could see that there was animals are, you know, swimming up and down it. It was either gonna be muskrat or it was gonna be beaver. You can see the bubble trails this morning, definitely picked the right spot. I got a 330 set on a high H stand right there. You can see the two ends sticking out. I didn't want to bust all the ice going up there. So right now we're going to bust the ice, check the trap. Uh, definitely got a lot of bubbles going through it. So I, I, I would assume we got something. All right, we made it up to the trap. Got good and bad. Well, it's all bad. The trap is uh, 
set off. And we got nothing in it. So let me get the trap reset. Well, actually, it's a, the good part is you'll get to see how we make this set. So uh, let me get it reset, and we'll get it all set up, and we'll come back and show you how we do this. All right, here we go. We're going to reset this spot. These high stands for these 330s work great in this deeper water. Um, you just slide your trap down in. They have loops on the end to run your wire through. I just go around. I don't go through the loops. Just find it to be faster. And then when you're ready, take your safeties off. And let's, uh, oh, I got to get us back over there. Here we go. We're coming. And you'll just slide your trap down in. I turned it around because I got the wire over here. Right in your, right in your run, just like that. Looking good. I got a dive stick there that's froze in. Now, let me grab my wire here. I gotta bring it back up because I need my chain. There we go. You get that set in that spot, got the dive stick. Definitely wire it off because they're gonna be moving when they hit this. Now, Another problem with spring trapping for beaver. You're going to catch muskrats. I think this is mainly a muskrat run, but it's pretty deep. The beavers are going to use it. I'm setting it. If I catch a muskrat, we got a muskrat. It is, you know, uh, in Wisconsin, we can keep the muskrats during the spring beaver season. New law. We used to never be able to keep them. Um, so that's it. Easy peasy, Japanesey. If you want, you can put some sticks like this down through the springs. To make things a little, little more uh, stable, I like that. Let me see. If I... Oh, and I like that. So there we go. That's it. Easy peasy, Japanesey. We're done. You can see the bubble trail. I set that trap right in the middle. It's really neck down. It's just this channel, and uh, hopefully we'll have something. Let's go on to the next one. There's not much going on over there by that lodge. Somebody must have trapped it out this winter or last fall. So, <coughs> right here is an old, an old caster mound. Right here, you can see where the, the beavers drag the mud up and they, they make a little mound and then they squirt their caster on there, their scent. This was probably made last fall. Got that big lodge right behind you. They're coming up in here just marking their territory. It's a great springtime set. If the weather's warmer or you're trapping places where it's the water's staying uh, open year round. In the spring, spot like this, you make a caster there, but you're gonna be froze in. But that's an old one. So that's, that's what you're looking for when you're looking for caster mounds. A lot of times, in the spring, you can really smell them. Like if you were standing right here, you could smell that caster. They'd be squirting on it so much. Uh, Cause in the spring, they're kicking the little ones last year's out, getting ready for this year's kits and kind of a lot goes on in the spring. All right, we're at another one of the beaver lodges. Uh, we actually did pretty good on this lodge last year. We'll show you some of that footage here, but uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about it. Um, first of all, we pulled our boat up here yesterday and uh, we had a little spot that was kind of sunk in. Well, now you see the beavers have been dragging up and trying to fix that spot and level it out last night. We had the boat right here, so we didn't put a trap. We have a trap right out there, a foothold that's down into the deeper water. That is undisturbed. But today we're probably going to pull that one and we're going to move it over here because they'll be back up here tonight and then we'll just run it out there and, and we'll drown them in that deeper water. We got the boat moved over, but this is right where the boat was yesterday. And that's kind of why we didn't set it. I could probably, if that water's deep enough, you can see they were coming up there. I might set another one there, kind of put some blocking in to keep them coming. Over here, if you only want to buy 330 conibears, you can still set these runs that are these, uh, where they're coming up on here. And, and this is what I want to show you. You just kind of do it like this. This is a spot that they had a spot that they were coming up. It wasn't heavily used. 
Yeah, I was kind of hoping, you know, there's an entrance right there. Uh, but they come around and they come up, and that's how I would set it. The trigger's on the bottom, you can see. Uh, the trap has to be half in the water in order for it to be uh, uh, legal. So that's what we did there. Everything's good, nothing there. We come over here, Corey told me I should set an entrance just to try it. This is not the main entrance to the lodge. It's kind of a sub entrance here. Um, we did put a 330 there. Nothing came in or out. Um, the main entrance of the lodge is right over there, probably right where the boat is right now. All right, here's, uh, Corey said we should pull this trap up and show you how we use uh, these drowners. Here's the drowners, we have a, uh, this one's probably a nine foot chain. We have three railroad ties. I don't, that water's deep out there. It's hard to get, you know, you need to go out there and push the stake in. Then when it comes time, if you get a beaver and he pulls it out, you got it staked down. I just use three railroad ties. You can use a concrete block, you can use whatever. And this is how I do it. Uh, basically, I'll show you this slide here. Here's my anchor point here. I'll either put a stake in. Well, actually not. I got the wire already wired here. So we'll wire this off. If by chance, it, 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 you don't need 10 foot. This is designed. You can take this wire out and you can actually slide this down and, and stake it here. But we'll use the whole chain. And then this stays up here. And when you get a beaver, he goes down the wire like this into the deeper water and he can't come back up and he drowns. So just make sure all this is up on this end right here. And we got our plates. And now you want to throw this out further than you actually need it to be because you're going to drag it back in. See, now we'll drag it in here, right like this, and here's my wire. And we'll just wire that up to here, or you can go through the washer, it don't really matter, it's all the same. Just like that. And make sure that's wired off good. There. Now, See our grounder right there. Let's get a trap set. These always go towards the pan. You'll hear it click. She's ready to go. It's like that. Wear our trap to the drowner. This is just a super easy setup. And it's reusable. You can use wire and then a kinks, or you can use cable and a kinks and, and all that. We'll go like this. Get this down here. Set the trap right there. We got a little shelf. Lennon's beaver lure right there. good that's it done sets made it's actually that fast all right here's that spot we were talking about that uh, we pulled the boat up and they were working to kind of fix where we had caved it in a little bit it's kind of sunk down so they probably pushed it up from the outside because your main entrance to your lodge is right there so they probably pushed that back up they're coming out here they're working on it you can see they were coming here and they were coming here that's where they're coming out um, kind of got a natural spot there to keep them from coming here with that stick. We're going to set two traps here. I'm going to drown them out that way and I'm going to drown them out that way. Well, I get these sets made. Um, why don't you enjoy some of the footage that we got here last year in the fall when we trapped this lodge. All right. Kind of had a real sick feeling. I, I hate when I lose an animal. We have a spot right over here where they're coming up on the lodge. We set it. We tried to bridge them our, uh, you know get fence them to come in they went around our fencing came up here on the lodge we came on the other side that traps is still setting good this one the stand is bent over and the trap is gone i wired it up but i don't remember what i wired it to but i remember saying justin this is a, I, sh I, I should have wired it to that tree and i didn't and now the trap is gone and i had this real sick feeling but i got to looking and right out there is my beaver tail let me throw a stick and I'll see, show you where he's at. Right out there. Just to the left of that, I see a beaver tail. So we're going to get the boat. We're going to go out there and get that beaver tail. We're going to come back. We're going to set this. 
And this time, I'm gonna freaking wire that trap up tight. These 330s are kill traps, but man, sometimes things just don't work out, so you gotta wire them up. That was almost a bad deal. I'm glad that, uh, you know, I was given the forgiveness to get him, and he's out there. So we're gonna go get him. We'll pull. This is the one that pulled the trap away. Oh, that's a good one. Look, and I smacked him right behind the head, and he still pulled that trap from there to there. You know, I had it wired up, and it looks like he pulled it right off the branch. I wired it shitty, and that's what you end up with. So, at least we got him. I'm happy with that. Thank God we had the catch pull. All right. Now you guys know the importance of even tying your conibers off. Um, it's pretty freaking important and uh, I kind of dropped the ball on that one. Um, but we'll show you another footage where I get another one in that trap and we got it tied off and things go very well. well. Here's that spot yesterday we had that beaver take that trap and he ended up way out there. Lucky we wired her off good because the trap's gone again. This time, got the wire here. Oh, and that's another beaver. So it's pretty important to wire them traps off. All right, here we go. We got this finished up. I got a number five double long spring over there. I got a number uh, four jump trap right here. Kind of made this a little bit more natural for them to come up. There we have a stump in that spot and they're already coming up there. We're not gonna put any scent here. We're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna vroom, vroom, vroom on to the next spot. All right, let's talk about how uh, I organize my boat when I go. This is probably, well, this will save you a lot of time when you get out there. Basically, uh, you know, I got, I got everything in milk crates and then you just kind of, just throw that in there. Um, pretty, pretty much because in like the first half hour, that's what your boat's gonna look like anyway. So save yourself that like half hour time and just start out with the stuff just like that. You know, just, just, get it, just get it all thrown in there and just, just get on the water. That's the most important thing. All right, some people are gonna think Spring beaver trapping sucks because uh, a lot of guys trap out the lodges that are close to the road and stuff like that. That's just something you're gonna have to deal with. If I get a chance, I usually go in, try to get them trapped out in the fall. Um, we came here last fall. We trapped this lodge here. We did really, really well. We actually caught uh, four in one day. We're gonna show you that footage as we head back to the truck. But you can see somebody's got their flags out there. Uh, we looked, they got some traps set and uh, Hats off to them. I know some of you guys would be all kind of pissed off and I kind of was a little bit because it's a lot of work getting back here and that's why I saved this spot. Figured it'd be good come spring because it's pretty hard to get back here. Um, but somebody else beat me to it and uh, hats off to him. I see he does have one beaver in a trap uh, up on the river there. Maybe we'll stop by and get a quick picture of that. But we're gonna head back, watch the footage from the fall and uh, we'll be back. We're out here on this big lodge. And they say, why do you trap? This is why I trap, because I come up here and I get to find a beaver butt there. Nothing in that one. We got a beaver butt there. We got a beaver butt there. Got a beaver butt there. So this lodge right here, we got four. So we're gonna pull these out and give her hell, leave it, leave some seed for next year. All right, we just made her back to the boat launch. If you could call this a boat launch kind of just a ditch down in the spot in the trees. Anyways, hats off to the guy that's trapping back there. You know, outstanding. Um, I wish I could have got that back there before you, but that's okay. But here's the deal, guys. We got back here to the boat launch. Corey was loading the boat. And I decided to just walk up this little river right here and see what, uh, see what I could see. And I'm telling you, there's probably four or five really good spots that we're gonna set. There's a spot we're gonna put our 660 in. This big bad boy right here. We're gonna throw this in up there. There's a spot perfect for that. There's two deep water spots that I can drop a 330 in. Um, and then uh, there's probably a spots, two spots I can put drowners in. 
kind of a lot of spots here, but you know, I'm driving down here. I got other traps to check. So I might as well just kind of gang set this up here, see what I can do. Uh, the creek has got definitely some deep holes. I can get them drowners in and they actually happen to be in the perfect spots. So we're gonna get up there and we're gonna show you. And guys, listen, sometimes some of the best spots you can walk to. You know, you just gotta get out there and just gotta go your scouting. This time of the year, this stays open. Them beaver are running up and down here. There's a couple caster mounds up there. I'm pretty freaking excited. So we're gonna go up there and see what we can do. All right, here's the first spot. You can see we're not far from the truck. Pan over there, show them the truck. We go right here. So this is pretty cool. We got a spot right here. We're gonna put a caster mound right here and we're gonna drown them out here in this really deep water. Then we're gonna go to the other side and you see where that little feeder thing comes in there, like a little spring? We're gonna put another set right there and drown it out here in the deep water. And the reason I know there's beaver coming up here is because right over there is a caster mound right there and I think it looks like I can get a trap set over there and drowned it out here in this deep water. So we're gonna have three sets right here, this spot, friggin' perfect, water's deep. I mean, you couldn't ask for it to be any better. Well, we ended up setting more traps than just those three. Um, my dad went back down there on Wednesday to check traps, but I had to work, so I told him to film on his phone and to make sure he films in landscape mode. Well, he ended up filming in portrait mode, so well, here you go. All right, right out there is that lake that the other guy's trapping. So we came down here into the headwaters and set a few caster mount sets, set three of them. All three of them scored. Um, just not with what I wanted them to score with. But here we go, we're gonna check them, I'll show you the catches and then I'm gonna reset them all and vroom, 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 on to the next. Here's the first one, mushrat. Nice rat though, we'll keep him. And we come down here to the next one. Beautiful spot, beautiful spot. I did talk to the guy that was trapping down here. He's gotten a few beaver out of here. And I know my buddy trapped a few out of here. So we might uh, be hammering them a little hard. In fact, there's the other guy. John, he's doing pretty good. So we set this point right here and then this other point. John's putting in for the day. We got some outer crap. But here we go here. Mushrat. And let me go across here. Old beaver dam. It silted in. <coughs> and right there, big old coon. So let me get these reset and get on to the next spot. All right. Um, some of these spots can be overlooked, and they're great beaver spots and great otter spots. And they're usually up close to the road. Here, let me uh, show you this spot here and uh, show you where we got a trap. Looks like the bridge right there, little pond, and then it necks down right there. I got a 330 there, and then I got a 330 a little ways back there. I think the spot gets overlooked because not too far in here, it turns to basically dry ground. So, you can hear we're fairly close to the road. Kind of how we found this spot is after muskrats. See them swimming in here. Here's a good muskrat spot. This little pond right here is probably good for uh, six to ten rats every year. I got a little uh, bank den there. You can see where they're crawling out. But anyways, like I said, here's our next down. So we got a 330 right there we're gonna check. And right back there is all dry ground. And there's a little bit of a pond and more dry ground. But if you look, right there is a beaver butt. So we'll go over here. Got a 330 right in there. 
right here is a muskrat den. I didn't notice it until I set the trap and they come flying out of there. Can't get them to come out today. But anyways, they come out and they go right that way. You can see the kind of the, the sand there. So I left a little area for them to get in and out in the hopes that I wouldn't get muskrats in my 330s. And it seemed to work. I'm pretty happy about that. All right, there's our beaver. Pretty excited there. But there's not much to this. And like I said, you go here. And it basically turns into dry ground. But in the spring, when them beavers are looking to get out and expand a little bit or find a new territory that's probably a young beaver they will come up them and they're not afraid to walk that dry ground slide in there come swimming up there and we got him so let's go over here and see what we got all right it's like a smaller beaver but beaver's a beaver Let's uh, pull my sleeves up here. I don't even have my hip boots on anymore. I don't know why. But we're going to, right down here is the stand. That baby's in there. Got to get a little wet. Oh, got him right by the head. Let me uh, get him out of here and we'll show you. All right, here he is. We got him. This is a... Uh, this is why I wire my trap to my stance. Because when you pull them up, you don't lose your H stand. So we have the H stand, we have the trap. We'll be able to get this all back together and set it. Dandy, dandy beaver. Not a monster, but a good one. We got a tail to eat. We got some hide to sell. Dandy. Freaking love it. All right. Time to get this reset and vroom, vroom, vroom. On to the next. Yeah. Alex, muskrat. muskrat. Yeah. All right, you see we got a muskrat when we were coming in. We got nothing in our uh, other sets. Came over here, trap was gone, I gave her a pull, and uh, we got us a beaver. Seen his tail coming up, and I got him kind of snagged off here. Right, there he is. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. He'd been down there. We might have caught him the first first night. Uh, they get a little waterlogged when they're down in there, but it doesn't hurt them. That water's friggin' ice cold. Good back foot catch. Look at the size of the caster on these things in the spring. Just loaded right up. So that's friggin' cool. Like I said, we'll get the muskrat off. This is the last day we're pulling sets. At least we didn't get skunked. Just uh, freaking awesome, man. Got him. All right. It's part of uh, spring beaver trapping. It's catching them muskrats. He wasn't even moving that trap. Double leg catch. Get the trap up here and get him out of here. He didn't even move the trap, but we got him. Let's check this one too, as long as we're here. We hammered this hut. In fact, we hammered all of these pretty hard last fall. So I didn't expect my spring catch to be too high. Nope, we got nothing. But look, we do have, my buddy Nick borrowed me this one. 
get the sticks off of it. This is what he uses for setting in them high, deep uh, runs. So we'll get all of these traps picked up and we'll vroom, vroom, vroom onto the next spot. We're coming up on that set we got in the channel here. And we're kind of jammed up in the logs. It's all right. Can't see it. No, it doesn't look doesn't look like we got anything. Man, I thought for sure we'd probably at least catch something here. Oh no, we got a mushrat. I said we'd probably catch a muskrat in this set, but still had to set it just in case. It's a little bitty uh, little marsh rat. Not even much for a gland. All right. Um, damn it. The setters are back in the truck. Oh well, we'll just leave them in a the trap even though we're pulling traps. Even though we're pulling traps, dude, we got to remember the setters. It's probably the most important thing. Man, I wonder if somebody get their hand in there or something. Uh, safeties. Too. Safeties, yeah, I didn't bring them. So we have to, we got one more spot to check and then we'll, uh, we'll go back to the truck and get on to the other spots, but we only got one spot left on this pond. I wanna swing over there and talk about irresponsible trappers. Um, let me get this off of here. All right, here's one of my caster mount sets. Um, <coughs> the trap is set off. It's not hardly moved. Um, I don't see any beaver here. A lot of times when you get a snap trap like that, they've come into the trap with their front feet full of uh, dirt and mud, and they set it off with their, with their uh, chest. I didn't have a whole lot of room here because it's shallow here and then it drops way off. So I was just hoping for the best. Odds are I would say it was probably a muskrat, because if you look right here, I got fresh, fresh muskrat poop on the, da on the caster mound there. Um, another thing I want to talk about here, irresponsible trappers. Um, I don't care about competition. I'm not talking about that. You could set a set right next to my set. Probably pissed me off for about five minutes. I don't really care. You know, I've been through two big fur booms now. I know all about competition. It doesn't really bother me. It is what it is. Um, I set these sets on last, what, what was it, Saturday? Sunday. Sunday we this one. Oh, okay. So we set this set on Sunday. Um, and then uh, John, the guy that's trapping them other spots, he came in here on, uh, no, we, yeah, because he came in here on Monday and told me that uh, there was a goose floating in one of my sets. And I thought it was this one, but when I got over here, it's actually out on this lodge. Um, you can see there's some sticks sticking up right, he fenced it in, and then there was that goose. I did not set that lodge um, because it just didn't really intrigue me that much. I figured if there was beaver there, I would catch them here. But that goose has been floating since Monday. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days. You have to check your sets every four days if they're drowners here in Wisconsin. So dude, we ain't turning you in. We ain't going over there and doing that, but I'm here to tell you guys, that shit is what gets us all in trouble. That's how we lose four day checks and stuff like that. You know, if you're gonna check that maybe you could have saved that goose, maybe not, I don't know. But to have that goose floating there for five days when you're only allowed 96 hours, that's bullshit, dude. If you can't get out and check your traps at least every four days, you need to pull them and take your ass to the house and go back to playing video games. All right, I came out here Wednesday, checked the traps. Uh, I had a muskrat in that one. Um, just this spot I thought for sure was like gonna be my honey hole. And uh, it just didn't work out that way. And that's how it happens sometimes. Um, you can see out there, we didn't get anything. But when I came back on Wednesday, I know what I said before, I don't trap the entrances. Well, Wednesday, 
and then today is Saturday or Friday. So this is gonna be my last day we're pulling the traps. So I did set the entrance here. I didn't get nothing. Um, come over here, nothing in that trap. You know, the water's muddy, I thought for sure. We had bubbles in the ice. I just thought it was gonna pan out. Um, watch it, it's pretty slippery right here. I set that entrance right there and uh, check that trap, but it doesn't look like there's anything in it. <coughs> nope, I can see the traps right there. Nothing in it, we're gonna pull that. Uh, this trap is set off, but it's right here. And again, the problem I had here is I like to set these back a little bit, my footholds in a little deeper water, but right here we had shallow, 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 and a big drop off. And uh, I got some fur in it here, if you can see. So I think I, uh, I think I got him by the belly. So we probably end up with a trap shy beaver there. Uh, unless that beaver right there that we got in that trail, there, that trail set in the conibear, bear, I can see his beaver butt sticking out. If that beaver's got hair missing on its chest, it won't be a trap shy beaver, but we're gonna have to go around and get around there and that's how we check that trap. Don't try to walk out on these feed bed guys. They look sturdy, but you'll go right through them and you, it's a bad deal. So we know we got one there, we're gonna pull these traps and we'll head around that way, pull the beaver out of that one. That's uh, two beavers so far today and two muskrats. So we got some more sets to check. We got uh, a couple more caster mounds down in the river we gotta go check. So let's get these and then vroom, vroom, vroom on to the next. All right, again, last day, thank God, cause we forgot the setters back at the truck. So I'm just gonna pull the whole thing here. Um, Guys should like buy seven sets of setters and 14 cents of safeties and just uh, leave them all over the place. You can definitely feel this run where they're coming up through here. So if you want to check a spot, it should be, you should be able to feel where the beavers are running. All right. Looks like a little one. Oh no, and a decent one. Just a little bit behind the head. Still a perfect catch. He ain't go nowhere, dude. He hit that trap and just <laughs> laid right there. So let me get this out of here. And we are heading to the truck and go down to the next spot. So all the rest of my spots are where we walk in. We don't have to. Uh, worry about I don't believe I can't believe I didn't wire that H stand that it easy enough to find boy that thing's got some big old he was carrying branches when he come through there big old set of choppers whoo man them things are razor sharp all right if I can get out of here with him without dying the day will be a success some of you new trappers might want to know that a beaver's teeth grow continuously and that's one of the reasons that they have to chew on trees and bark and everything is to keep them wore down and that's how they become razor razor sharp so really if you're going to be dinking around with your teeth be careful they will cut you all right guys this is a super 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 good spot um if the beavers weren't all gone uh, we had we set it anyways just because it's the spring and we thought maybe we'd catch some cruisers. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this spot because this is like a key beaver trapping spot. We got an old beaver dam. My buddy trapped about 10 beavers, 12 beavers out of here to get to be trying to fill his otter tag and he got his otter, but took 12 beavers out in the process. In Wisconsin, we cannot trap a beaver dam. They're trying to protect the otters so they don't let us trap. We have to be 15 feet away. It's kind of a gray area because they don't tell you where you have to measure from. So what I do, I have a string. It's 15 and a half feet long. I suggest you get one. And I start at the water's edge 
and I can run that string out and that tells me where I can put my traps. This one here is a lot further than 15 feet away. I wasn't really worried about it. Um, but here in Wisconsin, like I said, you can't trap the dams, so we gotta come back a little ways. We find these little spots that come in. You come up here, you make a little caster mound. You can put a foothold here and drown them out there, or you can protect it with a 330, just like we did right there. Put it on the H stand, but uh, we made that up with just the sticks, so you can see what they uh, kind of look like. Um, killer spot for otter and beaver. And, and we can't do this here, but if you live in a state where you can trap a beaver dam, Right out there was a bigger area. You can see where the dam is broke. If you were to take and break a, that uh, regular dam, you could stick a 330 in there and you would catch a beaver almost guaranteed or probably an otter. Old dams like this that have a break like that, same thing, put a 330 in it, deadly on beaver, deadly on otter. Um, but here in Wisconsin, we can't do that. Hopefully we can get that law changed. Um, we're gonna work on it, uh, but here, if you can trap in a state where you can trap on or near a beaver dam, we'll show you some other kick-ass spots. Right here. You can see there's some old chewing. They were coming up here, going up into the scrub brush and chewing off the branches. But right here where they're coming out, here and right there. You put a foothold right there, you could run it out there and drown them. You could have uh, fenced that in a little bit, put a 330 in there. It had been deadly. Here's another spot right here. It's kind of all faded in because like I said last fall and in early winter my buddy trapped this out pretty hard but they were coming right here and going over deadly spot for beaver and otter set a foothold there set a foothold right there and double up on them all right here's the last spot this right here is about 16 feet away from the dam so I'm pretty pretty close uh, but you can see where they chewed right there they were coming out feeding right there you couldn't, I couldn't set anywhere on that island um, because it was too close. I was gonna set over there, but then it kinda, they could come in and out here, I thought. So I set right here, uh, protected this little channel, only because it comes up here. You can see where they've been feeding, chewing off stuff. It's all older stuff, but it's there. Um, put a caster mound right there, protected it with a 330, little dive stick. Easy peasy Japanese, that's where to go. You know, you could probably walk down here, find some more caster mounds to set or make a few, and it would be a really, really good spot. But like I said, there's already been 10, 12 beaver caught out of here. We were set up on it for four days. We didn't get nothing. We're pulling our traps today, but uh, it was just a really good spot to show you guys. So vroom, 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 on to the next spot. All right, see some fur floating. And another raccoon. This is the same spot that I got a freaking raccoon yesterday. Or no, that was Wednesday. Um, but John, he's over there picking up his boat, told me that this was not here yesterday, so I got him last night. And we're pulling sets, so let's just pull him on up. Two raccoons and a caster mound. Oh. Just another one of them little bitty, ugly. Whew. All right, and then right there is on the point. You can see I got something floating there. It's right up next to shore. I would assume that that is probably another muskrat. Same spot I caught one in yesterday. That's part of the problem of that spring beaver trapping is you get all them dang muskrats. Yep, mushrat. They sure don't move the trap far when you get them. Got him. That is a freaking muskrat highway right there. Look where they're coming out and walking. You can just kind of follow it. Just makes a little U right here. Boy, a guy could catch probably four muskrats a night on that spot. Right there's the channel coming off of this main creek. We didn't set it this spring because John is going up there with his boat. He goes up that way, up and around and everything else. He's got a couple sets back in there and he's caught a few beaver, but that right there is a killer spot. Let's take some sticks and, and fence it down and get that, uh, get that trap set right there in the deep water. But that's where we got that one last fall. We'll show you that. All right, not all the spots that you can beaver trap, you gotta go to with a boat. You can find some good spots 
Uh, you get back here in these sloughs, we've got a nice little creek right here runs up. Little feeder creek, you can see right where they're swimming. We've got a beaver dam right up there. Just neck her down a little bit, put some dive sticks in. And then, hopefully you come back, save these otherwise they'll be floated down a damn river. When you come back, you should have, well you almost made it through. That's a, that ain't that little. I thought it was a little smaller. But. He must have really been giving her when he come through there. There he is. Perfect eating size. Ah. What do you think he weighed 100 pounds the way I struggled him out of there? But all right, we're going to get him out of here and get this reset and uh, move on down. Trap is gone. Chain's tight. Oh, there we go. Right down there. Looks like an otter. See it? It's way down. This was deep. It's way down there. Let me get it. I think we got us an otter. Whoa! You see it? Whoa. Right? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Freaking beaver. Oh, man, I thought it was an otter. That's another nice one. Ooh, this one might be a female. Anyways, front foot catch. That's why he was down there so deep. Catch them on the back feet, they kind of go up like this, you know. Front foot, they take them right straight down. Perfect. So, man, these little spots like this, if they're deep enough, get them drowners and get them out there, you know. And you can check this every four days. If it's not deep enough, you come back, good chance you're going to have, you either got to use kind of bears or you're going to have a live beaver, but... This worked out perfect. Caster mount set, trap was right here. Where you went. Friggin' awesome. All right, man, here's a perfect spot. At least I thought it was a perfect spot. We didn't catch nothing in it, but you can see this creek gets pretty narrow and it goes out to the main channel. And this is just kind of a U. I don't know if you can see, but way up there is a beaver dam. They have this dammed up. So I really thought that I would get him swimming back and forth. Didn't pan out, but you definitely got to set spots like this. I'll show you exactly where they were set. We had one set right here. Just like that. Let me get this baby. Set off here. Almost snap my fingers. Just like that. Set that one up there. And I got another one that's right here. See, you wire that H stand right to the trap, you can pull it all up together. And you don't have to dink around and end up losing it. So anyways, that's that guys. We got uh, one more spot to check. So we ended up with one beaver down here, a muskrat and a raccoon. The same spot the other day, I ended up with two muskrats and a raccoon. So all in all, it was a pretty good spot. I think John pounded them really good here. John's got some sets right over there and I think he got five or six. So we did really, really well here. Well, folks, there it is. 
fast track to beaver trapping and a few bonus critters to go along with it. What a freaking riot it is to come out in the spring. Totally different weather. Everything is awesome. Um, so anyways, we got some great fall footage. Got some spring here. We didn't run too big of a line, um, but we focused on what we had to do. If you get anything out of this video, it is that uh, these aren't too hard to get. If you know the caster mount set, uh, the den set where you can set in uh, on the lodges and stuff, uh, get it where they crawl out, and the runs, just like muskrats, and that's really all they are is they're just kind of a big muskrat with a flat tail. So uh, easy peasy Japanesey, all the hardest part is getting all the gear out there and the boat and you know walking with a lot of stuff. This is my third trip back pulling traps and bringing in the fur and all that. So uh, anyways, pretty friggin' awesome time. One thing that uh, was really cool about this season was, you seen I had that competition. Kind of hurt us a little bit on our numbers, but I was okay with that because competition is competition. But I got to meet a cool dude and that was John. And John is a four year trapper, fourth year. He's uh, putting up some amazing numbers and uh, I got to talk to him. And probably the coolest part for me is when he got into trapping and, and got into it so hardcore that he actually doesn't work all winter and it's all he does is trap because of my videos. So that's pretty cool. I know that you know a lot of you guys are trapping because of me and, and that, that's probably the greatest thing I can get. No money, no nothing could ever take that place. But anyways, I got to talk to John. John's a cool dude. So we decided to do an interview and uh, this is the end of the fast track to beaver trapping, but stick around right now because we're gonna talk to John and uh, had a little interview and, and just a cool guy and listen to his story. All right, guys, we're down here at our second to our last spot. Um, this is the spot where we set the caster mounds and all everything up the river because we had a guy that was trapping out on the on the or out on the big lake. And uh, this is John. We've met him before, but now we got him here at the launch. He's got one more day. We're pulling our sets today. He's gonna wait till the big snowstorm and all the bad shit happens tomorrow. And so uh, we just thought we'd stop and talk to John a little bit. And and uh, John is a fairly new trapper. He's only been doing this four years. Um, he likes dry land coon trapping and he saw my video and, and stuff like that. So I, I kind of create my own competition, but that's okay. So John's out here. John has been around. How many sets have you been running this last? This is his first time ever beaver trapping, right? Yeah, first time first ever. First time ever and he did it in the spring. Um, and you're running how many sets? Right around 60. 60 sets. All three thirties. All three thirties. Because yeah. he because he didn't know uh, he didn't know how to set the drowners and that, and he'll be set for next year because we showed him how. Today's yeah. kind of a slow day. He's got three beaver and a muskrat. Yeah. Um, but you've been at it for how many days now? I got here on uh, last Thursday. I set up. So. Thursday you set. So Friday was it's your first check. This yeah. is seven days. There, well, seven yeah. days. Yeah. Seven fun. days, and you're at how many beaver? I'm at 58 today. 58 so. beaver. So that's pretty freaking phenomenal. Um, so anyways, like I said, this is John's fourth year trapping. Uh, first year, you didn't do, you, nah, didn't, just, you did okay. No, nah. not really well. <laughs> I had fun. He had fun. So now, <laughs> now, he's, now he's got addicted. And, uh, and we're not going to give you John's last name because, you know, we got all them crazy cat bitches and the antis are some of my best fans and maybe John don't want them kind of fans. No. But, uh, <laughs> so let's say uh, this was a year you decided you took off of work. Yeah. Said that's it. Lucky he's like me. He works in the oil field, but he works down in Texas and he works in refining. So he, you know, he, he said that's it. I'm going to take the whole trapping season off, yep. and you're going to go for the gusto. That's what I did. So. <laughs> so you did it. So yep. you ran. So you started out midnight the first day. Started out midnight on raccoons, and uh, and you said how many sets first day? First day I got around. Probably right around 100 in. 100 in? Yeah. How many did you have in when you got going? Uh, it was probably 150 or so. 150. Yeah. And you run all dry land? All dry land. It was a 200 mile round trip. 200 mile <laughs> round trip. 
And, and you run all DPs. Yep, all DPs. Wow, that's yep. pretty crazy. So yep. what was your coon count at the end? My coon count at the very end of that first stint, I did it in the early season at midnight, and that was for... So you ran it for how long? For 12 days at first days. time. Okay. So in the 12 days, I caught 197. 197 coons. So, well, you yeah. couldn't pick up three road kills and call it 200. No, isn't that something? <laughs> so, okay. so then you went into, you were going to go after muskrats. Yep, then the rat season opened, and back so out there at midnight. Back yeah. out at midnight. <laughs> And this is awesome. This is the kind of shit I used to do when I was younger, and and I love hearing the stories from these younger guys, and I and I like hearing that I was kind of part of getting them involved in all of this. So it's yeah, pretty cool. We actually sat down here for about three hours the other day, and bullshit. Yeah. So that's a little bit about the interview. So okay, so you set out the first day, started at midnight. How many traps you get in? First day I had three hundred and <laughs> three hundred and some in. <laughs> three hundred and some traps. All. All one and a half. And wait, and halves. what trap brand do you use? I use Duke traps. Because? Because <laughs> they're cheap and I can buy more and I can set more. There you go, man. That's <laughs> awesome. So you got 300 traps out. Yeah. And uh, so then you made a check. And uh, so what did you end up with your first day? First day was not what I was hoping, but it wound up in 63. So. 63 <laughs> out of 300. <laughs> That's pretty, well, it's, See, it's still. It's all learning. You know? it's, it's all learning. So you ended learning. up, you finally got how many traps in? I finally got all 400 I had. 400 was, traps in one yeah. spot. All in one big marsh. One yeah. big one big marsh. Okay. Yeah. And you had a little bit of competition. Yeah, there were about four other guys out and, there. And yeah. this is this is cool. This is what I like when the fur boom is not when the prices are low or, or mediocre. Is you had some diehards. Yep. And you all, all got along. And we all got along. Did you, was, how many traps yeah. you got stolen? I didn't get a single one stolen. That's nothing pretty, messed with. 400 traps, yep. nothing messed with. Yep. I, I would, you know, I would, I would like to say if the prices were $12 rats, you would have had the same thing, but I yeah. highly doubt it. You'd have had 15 <laughs> guys out there and you'd have been fighting them off. But anyways, oh, yeah. so how many rats did you, how many days did you trap? I think it was, I can't remember off the top of my head. I trapped, I pulled sets, it finally froze out on December, I think, 4th or 7th. And I started on the uh, opener, which would have been, you know, in late November, whichever year. I think it was right. November 20th, something like 22nd. So for that amount of time, <laughs> the average wound up being 53 a day. 53 rats. a day, and your and total was? And my total was 1,704. 1,704 so. rats. <laughs> All right. So then you went into doing what? Then I go into the, whenever we got froze out and snowed, then I went to uh, cable restraints. And that's cable restraints. For fox and coyotes. You're not a big foothold yeah. guy on dry ground, are you? No, I'm not. I run a lot of public and, uh, you know, it's, so I here's can't the find thing. them edges. And, and, and we talked about this and I was yeah. like, why don't you run footholds? They're so much easier. Yeah. But you've learned, you don't have, right. you have dogs yeah. and you've got mm -hmm. pheasant hunting and you yes. got that huge issue. And that's why he runs dog proofs and everything. And yeah. it's pretty awesome that you're being responsible enough that, to do that. Hats off to that. So you run cable restraints. And your target? Mostly fox, fox Mostly and fox. coyotes. So. See, he's down south part of the state. He's got more fox. So how many fox yeah. you end up with? I wound up with 32 fox. That's, and, that's uh, awesome, dude. So <laughs> how, many, how many coyotes? And uh, I think it's 24. 24 coyotes. 24 yeah. coyotes. Yeah. Well, that's pretty friggin' awesome. Yeah. So now you're out here and you're doing spring beaver trapping. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and still working your ass off. And you'll probably have to Still go going. You probably have to go back to work so you can afford to do it again yep, because it. <laughs> uh, there ain't much money in it. But it, it, there's no. this is what I tell people. Well, how much do you make? How much do you make? Dude, the numbers that he put up and the experience that he had, you can't buy that. No, you can't. You know? and that's, I mean, so this, is, this has nothing to do with money. Not no, not as much as you would think with the amount of work that goes into it, you know. But he does have one yeah. really good advantage over guys like me. Where do you live? I live in. Uh... No, with who? <laughs> oh, <laughs> who do you live with? I live at home <laughs> with mom yep, and dad. Mom and dad. So he has There's... that distinct advantage. You could get into trapping and lose money if you uh, if you go to live with mom and dad. But anyways, guys, this is John. He's uh, we met him on the trap line. He weaseled into my spots and I'm uh, just super glad and it's freaking awesome because I got to meet him and dude, that is one hell of a season. Thank you, Sam. I don't no. give a shit what anybody says. That is one hell of a season for your fourth season. Congratulations. Thank you.
Here we go.